Hello everybody and welcome back. So I'm going to do a quick review of um, the rap game. And it was, I like the rap game. It's with Jermaine Dupree and he had five kids and his five kids was Jordan, which was um, 15 from Tulsa. He had Brianna, which they call Little Bree. She was 15 from um, Houston. Then they have um, Street Bud. He's like 12. I think he's the youngest one. He's from Atlanta. Then they had, had Ricky Bitty. We'll get on her in a minute. She's 13 from Atlanta. Then they had Rapunzel. She's from uh, Richmond. And she's uh, 15. So, uh, Jordan... He's a cute little boy with his little long hair. Um, he raps. He's one of those. He raps really fast. He, <clears throat> it's like everything's ran together. You can't make sense of what he's saying. He don't never have a hook or a chorus or whatever. Um, then Lil Bree, to me, she already sound professional. She sound better than a lot of some adults that's out right now. So I really like her flow. Then you have Street, but... He's the little boy. He's a cute little boy. Colorful hair. I'm going to tell you who he reminds me of. He just reminds me of a version of like, I'm going to say a version of like kid in place somewhat, sort of, kind of, but he's by himself. Um, then we got that this Ricky Bitty. Ricky Bitty, to me, is a spoiled princess. Like, I just feel like she thinks she's entitled and everything needs to be handed to her. Um, same for Rapunzel. Rapunzel, she's not spoiled. At the same time, it's like neither one of them have ever been told they wrong about something. And the same for Jordan. It's like they haven't ever been told that they wrong about nothing. And they so used to being glorified that they have an issue being corrected and criticized. Street Bud, and he, he to me, is the most realest one out of all of them, which he's 12, and to me, he's the most humble. Like, he said when the show come on, all he want to do is be able to have his mama home like that and be able to encourage kids his age. And I like, I just liked him all together. Um, so when they start out, you know how, how to start, it starts out, you meet Jenny or whatever, and she tells you, you got to, um, Go meet Jermaine or whatever. Um, they go to meet Jermaine. And Jermaine made this comment about um, Rapunzel because she had a purse. And talking about she, basically, like, she ain't even serious about rapping. She got a purse. Man, what the hell does a purse got to do with rapping? Because she could put that purse on messenger style. But as a female, you don't even know why she have a purse. It could be her time of the month. She may need medicine on there for PMS. Me, personally, if I'm not at home, I'm going to have a purse. Because I don't live here. I'm just supposed to get on your little bus and be gone from wherever I'm supposed to be in a strange place three or four hours. And I don't have nothing with me. Man, please, where they do that at? I No. I ain't even with my parent or nothing. I, I, I No. I don't know where they do that at, but I don't trust you like that, man. I don't even know you. And I learned the other season, I wouldn't leave my female dog with you, let alone my female daughter, because you made some sexist remarks about uh one of those girls. Then I can't remember which one it was, because I would have to go dig through my Twitter or pull up the episodes of that season to remember which one it was. But no, nah, you need to shut your mouth up about these comments you make about women, because the purse don't have nothing to do with somebody's ability to be able to rap. She she just it even without the purse that poor child just had issues. It, it pretty much I mean that's that's what it was. So anyway, when they um when they went up there, I'm gonna tell you I I felt like Jermaine them felt because. When he said, okay, who want to do their little rap first? They all sat back and waited for somebody to raise their hand. And then when when, when they seen somebody flinch like that's when they raised their hand, they all at one time said, no. Because on the other show, they was down there, you know, when they said, who want to go first? Was, they jolted so quick. It was so eager to get started. So I don't know what group of kids they picked this time because they don't, they either they shy 
And they need more motivation or something because they don't have no get up and go get it about uh, going on and performing or whatever. So I don't know. They he they need to. Uh, I don't know. These kids go mess around and get sent home. But Bree Kilton is always um, the one little boy. He's young though. He's only twelve. He gets a little nervous. So that to me, as a twelve year old, that's this completely understandable. But you go and get nervous. He's a child. What you expect him to do? He's not gonna be perfect. Um. So um, on their first assignment. And Jenny tells them they supposed to do an assignment on their foundation. Their foundation as in like where you come from and how to how uh about your life basically. But when they when she said where you come from, um a parent Ricky Bitty took it as like your physical address and not as in the foundation. She left off like they left off like the foundation part. And so she, uh, Jenny asked Ricky, <laughs> Ricky Bitty, did she miss the assignment because it wasn't correct? Which for me, how she talked to Ricky, Ricky, uh, Bitty was a little shady to me because she talked to her like she was 25. And did you, I mean, did you miss the assignment? That's not, you know, it just, she went at her like she was grown. So I felt like how Ricky Bitty came back at, at her was justified, even though her daddy wrote her rap about to get her thrown under the bus and kicked off the show. It was justified because if that's how you talk to a kid, it's only fair that they come back at you. And y'all talking about it's disrespectful. Yeah, it was disrespectful. But I'm so tired of seeing grown people talk to kids and be disrespectful to them. And then they expect the kids to keep sitting there and, and, and take it. I don't think you should do a child like that. I don't care what industry or business that you in. It's uncalled for. So anyway, um, they go to the little practice rap th thing with Bow Wow. And that's when um, Jenny said that little sideways out of her neck re remark to uh, Ricky Bitty. Um, they all got on the stage and did their little part. To me, um, Lil Bree did, it, uh, did the best. Um, and Jordan wasn't bad, but he, it's just a bunch of fast talking. And when they told him it was like reading a dictionary, they took it wrong. They, she told me what they want him to be dumb. They didn't say they wanted him to be dumb. When, when he said it's like, uh, it, it wasn't in it's at the end when they said, when they said it's like reading a dictionary, literally it's like somebody holding a dictionary, reading it as fast as they can. It's just all in there together. There's no cutoff. There's no stop. There's no ending. In other words, there's no hook, no chorus, no nothing. And they act like they can't wrap their mind around it. But um, I like Street Bud's rap. Um, he did the little practice part. They, You know, it related to where he come from. It was good. And then in his final rap, um, I love that it was kid appropriate. It was for a... 12 year old i don't know if he writes his own raps or if his mom writes it but i like the fact that it, it was age appropriate because i'm so tired of these little kids running around here with strippers and girls older than them and 21 year olds and all of this kind of stuff it's just kind of sickening to me and you know like i say it was age appropriate for somebody on his age and he said he wanted to inspire kids his age and i think with his songs and with his raps that he can um then Ricky Bitty, she did that did that lame song that she did that now we know after she went back to the house and told her dad what Jenny said, he gonna write that little slick coming at the end and he gonna say that it really wasn't supposed to come off that way. I feel like it was supposed to come out come off that way. I feel like he think cause he kind of know Jermaine that he can get away with some stuff. And I'm glad Jermaine making him see you gonna have to work just like everybody else and they gonna be gay to you. And I think he expected to do what he wanted to do because he sitting up here. He got a notebook of just written right uh raps and Ryan. Some of them probably his other daughters that he got her performing. And my thing is, can she write her own stuff? Because last season we seen these kids had to write their own stuff. The parents couldn't write them for them. So to me, this is gonna be a big issue. Now Rapunzel, I kind of feel sorry for her because basically it's like she been bullied about her size. 
and about how little she is and stuff. And so now she wants to just show people that she going to be bad to the bone. Like she going to be somebody and I could relate to her because I felt the same way when I started my YouTube. Like I'm going to be somebody. I'm not going to be bullied no more. I'm going to show people that I'm not stupid, which I'm very intelligent with the with some degrees and all that kind of stuff. But people don't care about that. They just want to call you names. And they just want to bully you because you're not like them. Like, I'm not a follower. So and I, so I can relate to her. Because I'm different and she's different. And I'm glad that she has an outlet to her issue. Being that her outlet is music. But um, they weren't lying when they said her presentation is dead. Paying. Like... It's just not a good presentation. Uh, and I think it has to do with her just insecurities. Because she just has, she's just so self-conscious. So I think if you build up her self-conscious uh, about herself, that she would, she may do better. Because she, she just stiff, bless her heart. She can't move or nothing like that. Um, so they're going to have to really work on that. But all in all, I think it was a good first show. I enjoyed it. Um, at the end, when he did the list, I did not expect for it to be three number fives. I did expect Ricky. Uh, and to me, my personal lineup, I already said it was going to go in this order. Number one was going to be um, Lil Bree. I said number two was going to be Street Bud. Number three was going to be Jordan. Number four was going to be um, Rapunzel. And number five was going to be Ricky Bitty. I did not expect for there to be three number fives. And in this order, he picked Jordan. Then under Jordan was Rapunzel. And then at the very bottom of the number fives was Ricky Bitty. I didn't expect that. And then he had a number one and a number two, which number one was being Little Bree. And a number two being... um um. Street Bud, but um, when he asked Street Bud and Lil Bree who should be, who did they think should be number one, and Street Bud, Bud said me, then when they got back to the house, daddy kind of teed me off when he yelled at Street Bud just going off on her, screaming and yelling at her, talking about, you gonna let a 12 year old, blah, 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 you should have, you, you are now like basically trying to make her be mean to him, but like she said, she kind of humble. She didn't want to speak up and say nothing because that's going to make them kind of start gunning for her. And you don't want them to know what your mind is. So she's smarter than her damn manager, dad, or whatever whatever it is because she right. You don't want them to know where your mind is. You don't want to uh, come off as cocky. You want to just kind of be low-key so they won't see you coming. So I don't like his attitude toward it. And I'm tired of all of these parents living vicariously through their kids. Like... You know what I'm saying? It's only like one mom that's there that actually got her daughter a manager. Cause she, it's like she's basically the only parent that ain't trying to live through her daughter. This is something that her child wants. So she got a manager for her child trying to help her child out. That's why it's two people there for her. But the rest of them is basically like grown people living through their kids. Like, no. Like, get your own life. If your kid's good at it, um, they good at it. But let it be because they're good at it. You just want to... Uh, it's like you said you wanted to be a writer and you had access to a kid and you said, well, let me write. Let me prove to people I can write. Maybe I can get myself out here like this. If they see this kid and see my lyrics and they'll pick me up and I can start writing for people. It's like, that's to me, like that's what they said. But anyway, I'm going to wait and see how the second episode's second episode goes Friday. Thanks for watching this review. As always, click subscribe, click the little bell so you can get notifications when new reviews, new hair reviews come up, hauls come up. Just click the bell and it will notify you. And I thank you for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.